laying in bed the night before Christmas. I heard my mom scream. When this happened, I was 10 years old, beyond terrified, way too scared to move. I lay there trembling. Then I hear her scream again and gurgle. It sounded like someone was gargling water and then choking on it. Then I hear her bedroom door open. A figure dressed in black flies past my door. I hear the front door slam and I get out of bed to go check on my mom. She's laying on her bed and her yellow sheets are now red. There's blood on the ceiling. I call 911 and sit next to the Christmas tree. That was the last time I saw my mom. Her killer was never caught. Last year around this time, I was at a Christmas party at my friend John's house. I didn't really know anyone there and didn't do much talking. Everyone at the party seemed really nice and about an hour after I arrived, we started playing a game called The White Elephant. It was where you trade gifts amongst everyone and everyone had an opportunity to steal a gift from someone if they liked it more than what they had. I had never played it before, but I'm pretty sure that's how it worked. In the middle of the game, a woman opened an envelope and read a note of what was inside. Her face turned red, and she became noticeably very uncomfortable and started looking around and was repeating, This isn't funny. Everyone wanted to know what the note said. She started reading it out loud and then stopped. She couldn't do it. She handed the note to the man and he read it. His face turned red as well, and he seemed uncomfortable too. Now everyone was demanding to know what it said. He gulped, and then read the words, I have killed six people. This is not a joke. The room suddenly became quiet and deadly serious. There were gasps, and a couple of people said something like, Very funny. It was clear that the joyous mood was shattered. Some people started yelling and demanding to know who wrote it. I eventually asked to see it, and when it was handed to me, I saw that it was typed. People began to argue, and I quickly grabbed my coat from the couch in the other room, and I told John I was going to take off. He nodded, and was trying to calm people down. I walked out to the door in the fresh falling snow. I haven't spoken with John too much since then, but I did ask him once if he found out who wrote the note and he said no, and that the party broke up shortly after I left. I often wonder if it was really not a joke, and someone had confessed in a very twisted way to murdering six people. Christmas Eve my parents left the house at about 7 o'clock to do last minute shopping. I was in the living room, watching TV. I was alone for about an hour, when out of the corner of my left eye, I could see something at the window next to me. Without turning my head, my heart stopped, as I knew it was a person standing there. I was afraid to turn my head and look at them, but after a few seconds, I had to. The person at the window glared at me. I didn't break eye contact, and I forced myself to say, Hi. The person responded without hesitation, Hi. Honest to God, I could not tell if this person was a man or a woman. Their facial features were off, shaved head, cold sores in the corner of their mouth. I was thinking they were some kind of junkie or mentally handicapped, or maybe both. The person stood there, not trying to hide. What could I do? What do you want? 
I asked. The person smiled and then turned and walked out of sight toward my front door. In a split second, I realized the door may not be locked. I jumped over the back of the couch and flew to the front door, and then I locked it. Literally, right after I locked it, the doorknob turned. I'm not sure how I noticed, or why, but the Christmas song by Nat King Cole was playing in the background. The doorknob stopped turning, and then I heard nothing. A few minutes later, the doorknob turned again, and then right after, I heard a key slide into the lock. My parents were home. I told them what happened. My dad searched outside, everywhere, and inside too. Never found the person. Never saw them again. I don't want to know why they tried to open the front door, or what would have happened if I hadn't locked it just in time. I was 13, and it was Christmas Eve. I was anxious for Christmas morning, so I went to sleep early at about 8.30. Of course, I couldn't fall asleep right away, so I just laid there, wondering what I was about to unwrap for Christmas. About an hour later, I was dozing off when I heard the faint sound of something breaking. It sounded like someone had dropped a glass or something downstairs, and I didn't bother getting up to see. Ten minutes or so after that, I was lying there when my mom or dad walked by my room. It scared me because I didn't hear their footsteps, and they passed by really fast. I called out for my mom, but she didn't answer. Just then, I saw them walk by again, but this time I realized it wasn't my mom or my dad. I was beyond scared as you can imagine. I ended up lying there, paralyzed with fear for about an hour. Nobody had walked by again, and I built up the courage to get up and go find my parents. I walked downstairs and saw that my dad was snoring in his recliner and my mom had passed out on the couch. I woke my mom up and asked who else was here and she told me nobody. I told her I saw someone pass by my bedroom and she got up and checked the house but wasn't really convinced that I truly saw someone. She was convinced, however, the next morning, when I told her that I woke up in the middle of the night to someone standing outside my bedroom window, watching me. They never said a word, and they just walked away. We never found anything broken. I have no idea what that sound was I heard, or how the person got inside. I experienced something on Christmas morning that's a little different than the norm. I woke up early, like every kid does, and was knocking on my dad's bedroom door telling him to wake up, that it was Christmas and that Santa had come. Well, it was strange that I had to knock at all. His door was locked, which is the only reason I didn't just barge into his room and physically wake him up by jumping on his bed. He never locked his door. It was just my dad and I just the two of us living in a small apartment. I was pounding on his bedroom door for much longer than I had planned, and he never opened the door or even responded in any way. I became scared and I started to cry. I ran outside and circled around the back of our apartment to where his bedroom window was. I climbed on top of an old wooden crate that was conveniently positioned under his window and looked into his room. I was terrified I would find him dead or something, but he wasn't there. I was relieved, but also panicked. 
Where the hell was he? I ran to the front office in my pajamas and told the woman there that my dad was missing. By this time I was bawling uncontrollably and had pretty much forgotten it was Christmas. I sat in the office while the woman made phone call after phone call. I can only assume to hospitals and police stations. Eventually she came over to where I was sitting, knelt down so she was eye level with me and told me my dad had been arrested. I didn't know how to process that at my young age and just cried. A police officer showed up at the office very shortly after she told me, and he took me to a police station. I ended up living with my grandparents. My dad had been arrested for breaking and entering, rape and attempted murder. The woman he assaulted lived in the complex right next to ours. I'm not sure how he got into her apartment, but I found out later that he stabbed her in the neck, but somehow she lived. On Christmas morning, I think in 2007, I was messing with the new stuff I had just opened. I was 12 years old. My mom and dad were sitting in the living room watching TV. My dad's cell phone rang from the kitchen, and he asked me if I could go answer it, which wasn't uncommon. He hated answering phone calls. I got up and walked into the kitchen and grabbed his phone. I flipped it open and answered the call. I said, hello, and was very surprised to hear my mom say, look in the basement. Then she hung up. I walked out of the kitchen, and she was sitting right there, watching TV like she had been. I smiled and asked her, what's in the basement? She looked at me, puzzled, and asked, what? I asked her again and she then asked me what I was talking about. I was confused and amused. I went into the garage, and then into the basement, through the opening next to the water heater. Expecting to find some cool extra present, I looked around. I found nothing, and then was suddenly terrified when I looked at the opening I had just entered through, to see someone standing there. Right as I realized it wasn't my parents, they walked away quickly. A moment later, my dad appeared and asked what the hell I was doing. They swear to this day that it was not my mom that called me. There was no way an intruder could mimic my mother's voice and somehow enter and exit our house without anyone seeing. It was crazy. I have no idea what happened that Christmas morning. One of my earliest memories of Christmas when I was a child was a disturbing experience. I was five years old. My father, at that time in my life, had to leave town often for work. On Christmas Eve, I remember my mother allowing me to open one gift early that night while we sang Christmas songs and baked cookies. I asked more than once when my father would come home, and my mother assured me that he was on his way. That made me happy, knowing that he was on his way home. I hadn't seen him in a couple of weeks. That night, my mother tucked me in. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and seeing my father sitting by my bed. He was humming my favorite Christmas songs to me, and I will never forget how peaceful and safe I felt. I couldn't wait to open presents with him in the morning. I woke up as early as I could. My mother was in the kitchen making toast and coffee, and I ran around looking for my father. I'm sure that you can see where this is going. My father was not home yet. I told my mother that he was in my room that night, that he was singing to me. A short while later, my father came through the front door 
with an armful of presents. They didn't believe me. I was so young, after all. They didn't believe me until they found a pair of men's black leather gloves on the dresser next to my bed. <laughs>